Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And the skies are clearing. How awesome is that? Colonel Bremen, Andres Turnquist with the Consulate of Norway. Special guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 64th annual 10th Mountain Division Foundation Memorial Ceremony. It is my pleasure to be here with you today. The 10th Mountain Division Foundation mission is to honor and perpetuate the legacy of the soldiers of the 10th Mountain Division past, present, and future by doing good works that exemplify the ideals by which they live. In that spirit, we are united in gathering today in this very special place to honor those soldiers of the 10th Mountain Division and the 99th Infantry Battalion who gave the last full measure of devotion to this country. Good morning. I'm Nancy Kramer, President of the 10th Mountain Division Foundation and proud descendant daughter of William Robso Robertson. I, ha I can tell you that story at lunch. Uh, a medic in World War II, 10th Mountain Division. 87th Infantry, Company G. He served along with, alongside thousands of other 10th soldiers that established a legacy of innovation, strength, and resilience. We come to know, we've come to know these characteristics. We honor, and for many of us, we try to emulate, especially today. I think resilience is important. The backdrop of our ceremony today is the Red Rose Granite Monument erected by the veterans of the 10th Mountain Division, World War II, in 1959 to honor those that sacrificed their lives in division battles in Italy. And today, at the American Cemetery in Florence, Italy, our Italian friends are honoring those who sacrificed their lives as well. This is also a special place where service members of all branches, veterans, friends, and family can come and know that your 10th Mountain Division Foundation is forever. Providing partnerships to support programs in the, in the areas of historic preservation, education, outdoor experience, and one of our top priorities we are advancing outdoor uh, industry career transitions for our veterans. To begin the ceremony this morning, I am glad to introduce the Canyon City Junior ROTC presenting and posting our colors. Present 
At this time, I'd like to have the Reverend Colonel Retired Michael James Fay come forward to give our invocation. Michael joins us uh, today for his first time uh, with the foundation ceremony. Before retiring as the rector of um, the Episcopal Church of the Ascension in Salida, Colorado, in May 2021, and his active parish service to the church, Reverend Mike had a distinguished 20-plus year career in the Army as an orthopedic surgeon and leader. During the years of Vietnam and beyond, he retired colonel in June 1990, only to be recalled to active duty for Desert Storm in December 1990. His awards include Bronze Star, Purple Heart, Legion of Merit with one Oak Leaf Cluster, Army Com Commendation Medal with two Oak Leaf Clusters, and the Vietnam Service Medal. Thank you for your service, Reverend Mike, and thank you for being here with us this morning. Tell her in the 10th Mountain Division by stepping up here. I had a chance to be in the 10th Mountain, but I took the 7th Infantry because it was in California. It was a lot nicer. <laughs> Good morning. Let's pray. Holy Father, we gather for your blessing this day, remembering our brothers and sisters in arms who have gone before. We ask your loving gifts for all the members of the 10th Mountain Division, not only those who fought in Italy, but those who throughout the years have fought for our country in Haiti, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, as well as those currently serving in Europe in support of Operation Atlantic Resolve as part of NATO efforts to, to reassure Eastern Europe in response to Russian aggression since 2014. Although I'm not allowed to ask for specific units Please, Lord, care now for our 100,000 troops supporting the Ukrainians for their struggle and freedom. In your holy name, bless us. Amen. It is my pleasure to introduce Jack Breeding, a member of the Memorial Day Committee, a member of the Board of Directors of the uh, 10th Mountain Division Foundation. <clears throat> Jack will be presenting this morning a very special tradition that we have in the reading of Soldiers Don't Cry. The 10th says goodbye. This was first published in the blizzard in the April 19, 1945 edition. Soldiers don't cry. Last week, men of the 10th stood beside fresh graves in a cemetery some 20 miles from Florence and said goodbye to comrades they would not see again, lying now where artillery fire could not disturb their sleep. Soldiers don't cry. 
But out in the dust and the sun of the cemetery that day, there were things that were likely to get in one's eyes, blurring the wreaths of laurel and magnolia, and making it hard to read the shiny nameplates on the little white crosses. Here is George, killed fixing wire. He volunteered for the job. He was just married before we left Swift. This one is Pierre. You remember Pierre, the long, lean, kindly chap who was always playing chess at the service hall at Camp Hale. And here is Lorenz, one swell guy and the smartest man in the regiment, they say. And here are Lewis's and Bob's. This one is Torger Tokel's. The dog tag on the cross is muddy. And here is Carl's. He was among the first to get the Silver Star. And there's Arthur's. He saved a comrade from drowning during a river crossing at Camp Swift. And Bill Kennedy's. He invented a mortar site that some of the boys are using now. And Labonts. Once on Sugarloaf, he carried another fellow's pack as well as his own. And when the lad still couldn't make it, he picked him up too and Herb Spaulding, and Sergeant Halls. There are many more. They're not all here. Joe, remember how his comic strips in the blizzard used to make you laugh? He lies elsewhere. So does Alan, who wrote poetry in the midst of the war. These ceremonies, these goodbyes, are for them too. The day was warm, and a light breeze stirred the American flag flying from the tall white pole. Just before one o'clock, the men, one from each squad that had lost a comrade, formed by battalions before the speaker's stand. Many wore purple hearts, some the bronze star ribbon. An Army Service Forces band played favorite banner, and the flag was lowered to half-mast. Chaplain Brettermill, a Protestant, Chaplain Cannon, a Catholic, and Chaplain Paperman, a Jew, prayed briefly. The men stood with bowed heads. Soldiers don't cry, so three medical aid men quietly led away a captain. The band played Semper Fidelis. Major General George P. Hayes stepped forward on the stand. It is with mixed feelings of reverence and pride that we of the 10th Division assemble today to pay tribute to our heroic dead. With deep humility, and the deepest gratitude and pride, we acknowledge that these comrades voluntarily gave their lives to maintain our liberty, self-respect, and a happy existence for ourselves, our loved ones, and our fellow men. We shall never forget the comrades we leave here in this sacred soil. We pledge ourselves to always render them lasting devotion. For us, they will always be a source of inspiration. May we always be as loyal. The band softly played Shenandoah, while a large wreath was placed at the base of the flagpole. The wreath was inscribed, In Memory of the Men of the 10th Mountain Division. Then Chaplain, Chaplain W.J. Moran, Division Chaplain, prayed, and an eight-man squad fired three volleys. As the bugler blew taps, the flag was slowly raised from half-mast. The tro troops marched out of the cemetery to the tune of Washington Post. The 10th Division's first Memorial Day, April 6, 1945, was over. Soldiers do cry. Jack was reading the um, the story. It reminded me. I would like to thank um, our special um, uh, quartet um, this morning. They are very brave. Um, brass quartet in this kind of weather is very challenging. <laughs> um, but I want to thank and acknowledge um, the. Um, I, I, I've lost my place here. The Fourth Infantry. 
Division Brass Quintet. Thank you for your music to this point, and we look forward to hearing more. They, in fact, are brave souls. This morning, it is my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Colonel Matthew Brayman. He is our guest from the division headquarters at Fort Drum. He's the deputy commander, 10th Mountain Division. Colonel Matt currently serves as the deputy commander of for support, 10th Mountain Division. He began his military career after receiving a regular army commission from Norwich University as an aviation officer. He completed his flight training and served in the 82nd Airborne Division, followed by duty in the Republic of Honduras. After 9-11, he served for a decade in the 160th Special Operations Avi Aviation Regiment Airborne, the famed Night Stalkers. Before being selected for command of an aviation battalion in the 10th Mountain Division, he was, he was commanded at every level brigade and below and has also served in the immediate office of both the Secretary of Army and the Secretary of Defense. Colonel Brayman was deployed over 36 months of combat operations in Iraq, Afghanistan, and the Philippines. His awards and decorations include Silver Star, Defense Superior Service Medal, Legion of Merit, and Air Medal. He holds a bachelor's degree from Norwich University and master's degree from both the Naval War College and the National War College. He is a lifetime member of the National Association, 10th Mountain Division. It is my great honor to introduce Colonel Matt Raymond. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Matt Brayman, and I'm a mountain soldier. Uh, these things don't happen on them by themselves, and so I'd like to thank some of the folks here that made this uh, possible. So, uh, members of the foundation, Kramer, members of the uh, association, our great uh, friends at uh, Fort Carson uh, with the band, the Canyon City RTC uh, detachment for your support today, both the color guard and, and later on in the ceremony, uh, friends and families of the descendants, uh, members are still serving today and those who have served in the past um, and most notably also our friends from uh, our Norwegian and Norwegian American friends that are here today as well and so before I get on script um, I didn't know this until yesterday as I walked up here to do the the first kind of reconnaissance of the spot here uh, I didn't know the lineage of the 99th battalion but uh, uh, it's special to me because this place is special from the 10th mountain but I, I wear the patch of the, of the Army Special Operations Command, which is the lineage of the 99th Battalion. So this is an extra special day to learn something new and to be with you here today. So so on behalf of Major General uh, uh, Beagle, the 10th Mountain Division Commanding General, it's my distinct honor here to represent over 18,000 Alpine troops of the 10th Mountain Division. For anyone who wears the blue powder keg, the, the blue and white powder keg patch with the red cross bayonets forming the Roman numeral 10 and the mountain tab, this terrain around us today, here in Tennessee Pass, and just a few miles away in Camp Hale, is hollowed ground. It marks the beginning of the division's historic ascent to glory, and the troopers of the division today continue that climb. I'm reminded of a very personal connection to this place that happened nearly 10 years ago, when I, the first time I was in the 10th Mountain Division. Prior to a deployment to Afghanistan, we were here conducting mountain training and made our way to Camp Hale to see where it all began. While conducting a site reconnaissance, we came across a pair of Army-issued skis and a plethora of memorabilia bearing the 10th Mountain Division insignia. The skis that we found in the lodge just behind me at uh, Cooper Hill measured more than seven feet long and bore the name of one of the division's earliest members, George Loudis. We discovered that Loudis was a local legend who lived in the area. So after a quick phone call, he invited us to join him and many other original 10th Mountain Division members for their monthly gathering. These were legendary Camp Hale men. Earl Clark, Dick Over, Neil Yorker, Dick Kaufman, Art Delaney, and Hugh Evans. It was there that I learned that Loudis, who was a high school dropout from Schenectady, New York, 
left there in 1943 and took his love in the mountains to Camp Hale. He told us it was cold, hard training, not for old men, but it was just right for an 18-year-old recruit. Loudest served in H Company, 86th Infantry Regiment. While Loudest was making his way out west, Earl Clark, Neil Yorker, Dick Over, and Art Delaney had already deployed with the, with the, the regiment to the Aleutian Islands, landing on the island of Kiska. They were the first elements of the 10th Mountain Division to seek out the enemy. When they returned to Camp Hale in 43, Dick Kaufman and Hugh Evans joined up and they headed off on the Italian campaign. You know, Earl Clark went on to retire from the Army as a Lieutenant Colonel in 1963 and as a member of the Infantry Hall of Fame and the Colorado Ski Hall of Fame. I later saw him in a Warren Miller film as he describes the 10th Mountain Division, Division's contribution to skiing in Colorado. Neil Yorker, a mortarman, was one of six sets of brothers in the division, all who survived the war. He was slated for his heroic action at Mount Della Vedetta, where he fended off a fierce German counterattack with his pistol and grenades. He was later wounded at Mount Croce. Dick Over completed his infantry training before being assigned to the 110th Mountain Signal Company. After the war, he became a ski instructor, and he routinely joined Clark in telling the stories of the division to people throughout Colorado. He's also been inducted into the Colorado Ski Hall of Fame. Dick Kaufman of B Company, 86 Regiment, completed, his, completed the Italian campaign, and when the fighting was finished, he became a member of the 10th Mountains Occupation Force that patrolled the Italian-Austrian border. It was there that he met his wife, Edie, who survived the Allied bombings in her hometown of Linz, Austria. Then there was Art Delaney from Brooklyn. I didn't even have to ask him where he was from. You know, he joined the 82nd Infantry Regiment after reading about the ski troopers in Life magazine. After serving the Aleutians, he fought in the Italian campaign and was later wounded. And finally, Hugh Evans, whose picture I see every day when I walk into the division headquarters. He was awarded the Silver Star for his actions near Mount Belvedere. He returned to school after the war and came back into the Army as a lieutenant. The impact of meeting these men as a new member of the 10th Mountain Division solidified the connection between its original members and its current members. These men made it their life's duty as survivors to tell the story of the division and more importantly, perpetuating the legacy of those who fell in the service of their country as the division climbed to glory. So it's today, on Memorial Day, that we stop to take time to remember those who've gone before us and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Ever since eight members of the Lexington Militia lost their lives in the first battle of the American Revolution, nearly 1.2 million service members, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Memorial Day was first observed after the Civil War and was called Decoration Day because families typically remember their loved ones by decorating grave sites with flowers or flags. We still do this today across America. In fact, the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, place small flags at every grave marker in Arlington National Cemetery and the Soldiers and Airmen's National Cemetery every Memorial Day. This occurs in many other of our veteran cemeteries in each of our 50 estates, our territories, and on foreign shores. In proclaiming the first Decoration Day in 1868, General John Logan, National Commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, wrote that we should not only remember those who have died in defense of their country, but also renew our pledges to aid and assist those who they left among us, the widows and orphans. Today, we continue to honor those who remain behind, those who paid a very personal price for us, our nation, and that's our Gold Star families. I'd ask any of our Gold Star family members in the audience today to please stand. I'd also ask that any of the members, any of the descendants of the original members of the division to stand as well. I know there's a few of you out there. So please allow me to express my appreciation to you today and to those of you that aren't here on behalf of all of us here today. We're humbled by your sacrifice, inspired by your resilience, and grateful for your continued service to honoring their legacy. How about a round of applause for them, please? So how do we honor those who have gone before us? We can do it in many ways. We can gather at a cemetery and walk among the stones with the hero's names written upon them. We can attend a ceremony like this one today. We can post a picture and share a story on social media. We can tell a story of these men and women who have who we've lost to someone we've just met. We can look at a picture or read an old letter and reflect by ourselves in private, and we can honor their sacrifice by serving just like they did and continuing to advance their legacy. 
So today, I'd like to spend a few minutes telling you about how today's mountain troops are honoring the legacy of our forefathers and carrying the torch of freedom that began with the sacrifice of those names who are written on the wall behind me. The 10th Mountain Division remains the most deployed division in the United States Army. As a member of the 18th Airborne Corps, America's Contingency Corps, our leaders never fail to call upon mountain troops when a mission needs to be accomplished. If you watched TV less than a year ago and saw the chaos in Afghanistan, the division's 4th Battalion, 31st Infantry Regiment, the Polar Bears, were, were there, standing guard at the Kabul International Airport and the United States Embassy, bookending two decades of 10th Mountain Soldiers' involvement in Afghanistan, which began in February of 2002 when Major General Buster Hagenbach deployed the 10th Mountain Division to Bagram Air Base and saw, the Amer saw America's first division to see combat after 9-11. The names of all those who gave their lives in that conflict are engraved around the division's memorial at Fort Drum and were memorialized on Thursday by the division. Just this week, the division's 1st Brigade deployed its last remaining soldiers on a nine-month mission to Iraq, Syria, and Kuwait to include 1st Battalion 87th Infantry Regiment. As we sent soldiers in harm's way, we welcomed home a battalion from the division's 3rd Brigade who returned after nine months in Iraq without losing a single soldier. The division has individual soldiers deployed in Africa, Central America. We have units from the Sustainment Brigade in Poland. We have a battalion of mountain troops at Fort Knox, Kentucky this summer, training every ROTC cadet that will be commissioned to second lieutenant next year. And upon my return tomorrow, the division headquarters begins its modern day D-Series event or warfighter certification exercise to assume responsibility as the headquarters for the global immediate response force, ready to deploy within hours of notification. Most important to this legacy, to the legacy of the division is our newest endeavor to explore training opportunities and exercises in the Nordic countries, like our ally Norway, and potentially soon in both Finland and Sweden. And so I'm reminded that the world remains a very dangerous place, and that our troopers are in harm's way all across the globe. But it's safe to say that today, the sun doesn't set on the 10th mountain patch, and our troopers stand ready to defend freedom and defeat tinnery, just as the original members did in 1943. As I complete my remarks, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. By traveling here and making the journey, you continue to, to a commitment to honoring our most precious gift, the men and women who have given their lives in defense of the cherished institutions of America. I'm reminded of this when I hear the words of Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And then I said, Here I am, send me. It makes me think of those heroes who step forward without hesitation in hopes of defeating tyranny, and they sacrifice their lives so others may remain free. So God bless you here today. God bless our soldiers in harm's way. God bless our fallen comrades and their families. And God bless the United States of America. Semper Avantis, climb to glory, to the top. Indeed, the legacy is being carried on. Thank you so much, Colonel Burnham. In the tradition of the ceremony, we also like to recognize individual profiles of the fallen. And this year, we have three, and we have three special guests that will be reading. The first profile of the fallen will be recognizing World War II, uh, 10th Mountain Division veteran. The profile will be read by Denise Taylor, who is president of the 10th Mountain Division Descendants. It's a wobbly affair. <laughs> Uh, today I have the honor of reading the profile of Sergeant Arthur K. Tokla. What's interesting about this for me today is yesterday at the museum at Flint Whitlock's talk, he was saying how Torgr Torgr Tokla uh, and Arthur Tokla were together when they were both killed. And the fact that up on the monument, 
they're right next to each other too. I never knew that, so this is really special. Sergeant Arthur K. Tokla. Arthur Tokla was born on September 10th, 1919 to John and Hulda Tokla. When he enlisted in the United States Army on March 24th, 1943, Tokla was working as a carpenter with his father and two brothers at Tokla and Sons, building contractors in Vancouver, Washington. He joined the 10th Mountain Division at Camp Hale, first with the 90th and 87th Infantry Regiments, and later with the 86th Infantry Regiment, Company A. On March 3, 1945, near Mount Delos Toraccia, Tokola crawled forward with his bazooka to take out an enemy machine gun nest, blocking his platoon's advance. He was killed in action, but not before completing his objective. Tokola was awarded a Bronze Star Medal for heroic achievement in action. In recognition of the World War II 99th Infantry Battalion, we have a special guest this morning. I would like to introduce uh, Anders Tornquist, and he will be reading the profile of the Fallen for the 99th. Anders is the assistant to the consulate um, in Denver, the, the Norwegian consulate. Good morning, everybody. Um, I have the honor of uh, reading the profile of Sigurd O. Thorsen, who grew up very close to my hometown in Norway. Staff Sergeant Sigurd O. Thorsen was born on January 7, 1912, to Håkon and Valborg Thorsen in Leidvik, Stord, Norway. Sigurd moved to the United States in 1938 attended St. Olaf's College in Minnesota. He registered for the draft on October 16, 1940, and was called to duty on September 28, 1942. As a member of Company C, 99th Inf Infantry Battalion, Sigurd trained at Camp Hale until September 1943, when the 99th was deployed to Europe. He took part in the battles in France, Belgium, and Germany. The 99th then went to Norway, where Sigurd was killed while on official duty. His body was taken to the parish where he was born and buried with military honors. Finishing our profiles of the Fallen this afternoon, we would like to acknowledge the 10th Mountain Division Light, as we refer to them, the modern 10th. Today we are honored to have First Lieutenant Ali Rios, who is the assistant um, to Colonel uh, Bremen, and she is from Fort Durham, and she will be presenting the profile of the Fallen. Good morning. Today we honor Captain Aaron Roy Blanchard, born 2 April 1981 and served as a Marine Sergeant before joining the Army to fly helicopters, as well as First Lieutenant Robert J. Hess, born March 25, 1987, a second generation Army helicopter pilot. Both served in 210 Aviation Regiment, 10th Combat Aviation Brigade. Both killed in action near Puli Alum, Afghanistan, on 23 April 2013. Hello teammates and friends of the 10th Mountain Division. I want to welcome all of you to the 10th Mountain Division Foundation's 64th Annual Memorial Day Ceremony. I'm Major General Beach Beagle, 10th Mountain Division Commanding General. I'm deeply remiss that I can't be there with you in person today, but I can imagine standing there with you as you gather just a short half mile from Ski Cooper 
where World War II men of the mountain did their advanced ski training in the 1940s when it was known as Cooper Hill. Today is a special day in which we take time to honor and remember our fallen comrades of the 10th Mountain Division and the 99th Battalion who lost their lives in combat. Those brave soldiers may decline the glory possible for all of those who followed in their footsteps. I am honored to be a part of this incredible division story. Thank you to the 10th Mountain Division Foundation for helping us keep the 10th Mountain Division memories alive in all of our hearts. Thank you for all you're doing day in and day out, and thank you all for doing your part to help us remember and for never forgetting our fallen. Climbing work. At this time, we will have our annual wreath um, parade. And at this time, if you are escorting or presenting a wreath, if you would please find your way to the wreath section behind the bleachers there. I want to thank Ellen McQuaid for helping us today. She and members of the 10th Mountain Division Descendants, Rocky Mountain Chapter, are helping us out. I would also like to let everybody know that there sometimes there are, we have a number of personal acknowledgements, wreaths, uh, flowers that uh, folks like to leave with, at the monument, and we will provide a opportunity for that uh, a little later in the ceremony. At this time, the first wreath is for the 10th Mountain Division Foundation. Jack Breeding, who is on the board of directors and one of our members of our Living History display group. Thank you all for all of them for their help in this process. Thank you, Jack, for being here. 10th Mountain Division um, Foundation wreath. National Association of the 10th Mountain Division is our next wreath. Thank you for all of the members of the National Association. Unfortunately, John Russell, the president of the Rocky Mountain chapter, was called away. Um, we wish he and Sandy well as they mourn the loss of his of her um, brother. Next is the 99th Infantry Battalion Foundation. Um, the presenter this morning is Terry Flute. Terry Flute and Carrie are awesome stewards of this monument. We thank them for being here this morning. And the next wreath is our 10th Mountain Division Light from Fort Durham Group. Again, we have Colonel Brayman and First Lieutenant Rios. Our next wreath is the 10th Mountain Special Forces Group. Next, we have the Colorado National Guard, 1157. Tenth Mountain Division Descendants, Denise Taylor, National President, Tenth Mountain Division Descendants. Norwegian Embassy, Ander Torquist, Consular Assistant, Royal Norwegian Consulate. Next we have 10th Mountain Division Hut Association. I want to thank Dave Lee for being the escort this morning. The 10th Mountain Division Hut Association is an awesome partner and they caretake the monument for us here. I'd also like to acknowledge Dave's service. He's a 10th Mountain um, Division Veteran, E-4 Specialist, Bravo Company, 4th Infantry Regiment, 2nd Brigade. Thank you for your service, Dave. We 
we have our own 10th Mountain Living History Display Group, Arizona chapter. We have descendant and national chapters represented today. We have Arizona chapter, the Armadillo. We have Fort Drum, New York chapter. Midwest. The Rocky Mountain chapter. Sierra Nevada. New England. Southern California. Delaware River Valley chapter. We have Roadrunner. Southeast. We're pleased to have Sons of Norway. District 6, Ms. Bev Moe is with us this morning. Norsemans of the Rocky. We'd like to welcome our local organizations that are with us every year. Minturn Holy Cross, VFW, post 10721. We have Leadville, Elks Lodge. And Elks are Lodge 236. And we have our um, Leadville. VFW plus one plus eight five nine. I believe that looks like the Norsemans of the Rocky. Okay. Thank you to all of our organizations, chapters, and contributing to our wreath laying ceremony this morning, and to our guests who came to be a part of the parade and be escorts. At this time, I would like you to join me in a moment of silent, silent prayer and remembrance. Thank you.
At this time, I would like to welcome back Reverend Michael James Fay for our benediction. Let's pray. General Omar Bradley said, Bravery is the capacity to perform properly even when scared half to death. And the greatness of a leader is not measured by the achievements of the is measured by the achievements of the lead. Importantly, we cannot forget he also said, It is to the United States that all free men look for the light and the hope of the world. We ask the Lord to help us live up to those words of his and of Douglas MacArthur, duty, honor, country. These three hallowed words reverently dictate what we ought to be, what we can be, and what we will be. When there seems to be little cause for faith to create hope when hope becomes forlorn. And that, my friends, deserves an amen. God bless you all. At this point, we would ask the junior ROTC, Canyon City, to retire the colors. Arch. Arch. 
Thank you. This year, the 10th Mountain Division World War II veterans and association members, the loss of these special people have meant a year of transition for the 10th Mountain Division and for the Foundation. At this time, if any of you have personal acknowledgments or flowers that you would like to bring forward to the monu monument, please feel free to do so. I would like to acknowledge two very special people, significant folks that were special to the Foundation and to the National Association. First is Mike Plummer. Colonel Plummer served in the U.S. Army for over 31 years in various airborne and light infantry assignments throughout the United States and overseas. He was very involved in the Watertown and Fort Drum communities, serving as chairman of the board and president of the National Association of the 10th Mountain Division, president of the Fort Drum, Drum chapter of the National Association of the 10th Mountain Division, and he was the chief fundraiser for the 10th Mountain Division Scholarship, which today gives over $50,000 to um, active duty and veteran family uh, descendants uh, through their, their work. He also was very involved in World War, uh, the Wounded Warrior Funds. His leadership in the area of strategic planning after his retirement over, over the past few years has been vital in shaping your foundation forever, the good works that we do today. I was very fortunate to meet Mike and be a part of his professional uh, strategic planning efforts, and I can't thank him enough on behalf of the um, foundation for his work. And as Colonel Bremen so eloquently shared about our friend Hugh Evans, Long-time ski trooper, lifetime miner. What a guy. I can hear him warming up now. 99 pounds of rucksack. His <clears throat> involvement and participation in the National Association, including reunion trips, trips to Italy, along with participation in the International Federation of Mountain Soldiers, co-publishing a C Company history titled Good Times, Bad Times, and his commitment to helping found a most important resource in carrying on the legacy, the Denver Public Library 10th Mountain Resource Center. Since 1978, Hugh also has been most important in, 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 in organizing so many of the 10th Mountain Skians, which continue today. A staunch supporter of the system of the 10th Mountain Division huts, <laughs> Hugh skied into all 19 huts, including the 10th Mountain uh, hut uh, on his 90th birthday. I was very fortunate to uh, be there a couple of weeks um, earlier, and we prepared quite the welcoming for him with a, a wonderful happy birthday, 90th birthday, Hugh. Uh, artist friend and myself, and I was very privileged to be on several hut trips um, with Hugh. He continued skiing until he was 93. After skiing, monument ceremonies, a song or two, as a uh, staunch member of the APRE group, he'd catch a ride to the Silver Dollar. I can hear him warming up now. He was inducted into the Ski Hall, the Colorado Ski Hall of Fame in 2016 and the Minor Hall of Fame in 2020. As a, we all have our own way, as Colonel Barman met, mentioned, that we carry on the legacy, that we acknowledge and honor those that are important to us. At this time, I'd like to share a poem De Debbie Clem 
Hugh's daughter wrote just recently. The mountain troops are passing, and as we watch them go, a thousand hearts are aching who knew and loved them so. They're wise. Thank you, Anne. Honestly, they lived, and courageously they died. We have known them in their whites, winding down an icy slope, edges keenly following the poignant trails of hope. Brotherhood, camaraderie, they taught us all we knew. We thought they'd live forever, for from drafts of peace they drew. But the bugle calls and time has passed, slipping unbid from our grasp. And the youthful soldiers beckon as the older troopers fall, fall in a train 10,000 long, shushing through the glades in song. And faintly now, but clearly, we can hear the last refrain, to boards upon cold powdered snow, dauntless, pluck and soul remain. And on a sunlit frigid day, you'll, gl you'll glimpse the flags of white wafting off the cornices which lie at heaven's height where the mountain troops are passing, who we've known and cherish so, and our thousand hearts are aching, but we must let them go. Thank you, Debbie. A reminder, um, after the ceremony today, uh, please come. Please come forward, though, Denise. Denise is honoring Pat Thornton today, who introduced me to the 10th Mountain Descendant Organization and to the Foundation. Just a little reminder, um, today, after the ceremony, you all are welcome to a lunch at um, Ski Cooper Lodge, where it's nice and warm, I think, inside. <laughs> all are welcome. And as you leave the ceremony, um, we, and if you are at lunch, we have some information on the foundation, how you might help, uh, the programs that we are working on, um, and how we're really dedicating a lot of time to helping our veterans in career transition. Um, that is a really important uh, part of our work um, that we are uh, focused on. So anyway, if you are there, we would love to meet you and um, share our information. There are, it takes, like, I don't know if it's a brigade or a platoon, but it seems like it, to put on these types of events. There are so many people to thank. Um, most are recognized in the program. Thank you again for all of your support. Jack um, Reading and the Living History Group who really make this all happen. I have a personal thank you to Amy Doherty, our administrative director. I cannot do this without her, so thank you so much. So ladies and gentlemen, as you leave today, keep in mind and reflect often on this day of American unification. This day that we are unified as the United States of America to honor those that served and those that continue to serve this amazing country as guardians of our democracy protectors of our liberty and our rights, protectors of our enduring freedoms. And now, on behalf of the 10th Mountain Division Foundation, safe travels, be well, sempre avante, climb to glory. Thank you.